Hey, what's up everyone? I'm currently in Yeongdungpo district, which is one of the oldest districts here in Seoul. And I'm gonna check out some very iconic buildings around here. One particular, which is Yuksam building, literally means 63 building. I've been there when I was a kid and I'm super excited to go back there and see how it's changed. Now the Yuksam building isn't the easiest place to get to because there really isn't a subway line that will take you directly there. But if you had to go, I would recommend getting off exit 3, line 5, here at Yoinaru Station and walk southeast along the river. Because you can't miss the iconic 6-3 building along the skyline, walking along the scenic river park. Today I'm gonna try some crammy crab meat sandwich. Not bad for a $2 meal, especially with a view like that. By the way, it's right here in front of the Yuksam building that you would be taking this famous Elan cruise, which is probably the best way to see the Hangang River and the skyline. Variety of cruises, including all in meals, nighttime, which starts at less than $16. You know, I gotta be honest with you. If it wasn't for the Seoul Tourism Organization recommending that I go to the Yuksam building, I probably would never come to this Hangang Park. And I'm actually a huge fan of Hangang Park. I go to the Pampo Hangang Park in Gangnam all the time. But after having been here, I gotta say that this is my new favorite Hangang Park. It's just so chill, huge, plenty of space for you to, you know, sit around, even kick a ball around if you want. Your children will love it. Lots of activities to do. Super clean. You have even like the COVID or the Hangang police going around making sure people are obeying their laws and you really can't beat the scenery because you got the Hangang right behind you and you have Seoul's most iconic building. Now I know Lotte World Tower will probably have something to say about that because now the 6-3 building with its 63 floors is no longer the tallest building in Seoul. It might not even be the second tallest building. But in my mind, this is still the most iconic building in all of Seoul because it is the world's tallest gold-covered structure. And even Lotte World Tower couldn't say that they are the world's tallest. So you might as well claim the world's tallest gold-covered structure, which is really iconic. And I remember when this building went up sometime around the 80s, I remember this is all I wanted to do. So it has a very nostalgic value to me. So the front entrance is not where you go for the touristy area because most of this is high-end business. But over here where it says 6th Street Convention Center, that's where we're headed. Now my ticket was sponsored by the Seoul Tourism Organization but usually it would cost you less than $32. You can just go to the observatory for less than $15 or the aquarium for less than $27. And I'll be headed off to the aquarium first. On first glance, I remember this place was really fancy when I was a kid but it definitely does seem like they did some kind of a facelift. Hello. All right guys, so off the bat, I find it pretty interesting how this has like a 180 effect. It's a really quaint little aquarium, but everything is really well laid out. All the fishes are really unique to me. Oh look, they got little otters or something. They're so cute. You know, I've been to a lot of aquariums, but for some reason, these are the first times I'm seeing these animals. They're so cute. I want one of these. Oh, really great place to take your kids. Whoa! And there certainly wasn't any interactive screens when I was a kid either. <laughs> I really remember this place being so much bigger when I was a kid. 
So that was them just telling me that there is gonna be a fish feeding time at 4 o'clock. I will have to give them a little points for English translation though. But basically this is the weekday schedule and on the right is weekend schedule. I believe this is when they give the stingray food and that's at 2 o'clock. This is for the penguin at 11 and 5. And then I don't know what that is, but that's what we're going to be seeing at 4. Great thing though is I think this is the main thing, which is the mermaid show. And it seems like it's every 30 minutes. Oh, the thing I didn't know, that's a seal. Oh my gosh, these guys are fast. And I can see why the aquariums are so clean because they take a lot of effort to clean it frequently. You really gotta appreciate how they maximize the small space they have for this aquarium with so many activities. Okay, so there's like a lot of explanation about the anatomy of the seal and the awareness about planet, etc. But fortunately, it's all in Korean. But even if you don't speak the language, you just can't help but appreciate how cute these seals are. To be completely honest with you, I didn't expect a lot from this aquarium because you know, I'm from California, so I've been to the Long Beach Aquarium, I've been to SeaWorld, I've been to some of the best aquariums in the world, so I'm like, how good can this be? But it's so interactive, they have so many cool things here, it's certainly worth the price of admission. I think what I particularly appreciate about this aquarium is because it is small and cozy, just how up close and personal you can get with these animals. I've never really seen any of these animals this up close in my life. Great place for children and couples alike. Notification that the mermaid show is about to start. Quite interactive for children. <laughs> They got multiple mermaids. So the reason they have so many mermaids is the steam is around the fashion show. This is reminding me of uh, all the little kids that want to take pictures in front of the princesses in Disneyland. So I have mixed feelings about that because obviously I'm not really interested in mermaids, etc. But you could totally tell the kids are digging it, especially the girls. And I gotta give kudos to those mermaids because it seems like it's two mermaids and then they're changing so then there's two people doing four different fashion shows and then they're running the show like every 30 minutes wow <laughs> i think you gotta come here and support those girls keep this aqua planet alive so i think i honestly came at the perfect time at four to see the seal feeding and then 4 30 to do the mermaid but i think you can also come at 3 30 to see the mermaid first and then see the seal at four and take off after Okay, now to the Museum of Colors and the Observatory. Welcome to 63 Yard. I think the elevator ride is maybe the highlight of the observatory here. Alright guys, I'm at the top of the observatory here. And I have to say, this is possibly the best view of Seoul you'll ever get because it's located super centrally. You get to see Namsan Tower over there. You see Gangnam way over there. Wow, you can even see Bukhansan Mountain from here as well. That's the mountain that I climbed. But this is right on the Hangang, situated where Old Seoul is. This is definitely a sight to see, especially because you can't really fly a drone in Seoul, so. I remember when I was a little kid, I wanted to come up here because going on an airplane was my biggest dream. And this would be probably the second the best thing to that. Now, one thing I think that's a must that I didn't do is to check the weather before you come here because you're really going to maximize your view up here when the weather is clear. But I think I really got lucky because I came on a day where I could literally see everything. Now, something that they also have here is what's called the Museum of Colors. And it's basically an art gallery. It's also included in your emissions. 
Wow, it's really fancy here. Definitely set up for you to be taking selfies. I can now see why it's called the Museum of Colors because there is an explanation for the significance of each color in art. And I really appreciate that they have everything translated in English right below the Korean. You know, I'm not much of a selfie person, but if I was, I'd be here literally all day. There's so much to take pictures of, so much to do, and it's really aesthetically pleasing. Oh my gosh, am I even allowed to step on this? Wow. I gotta say, they really outdid themselves with this observatory. What they lack in height, they definitely make up for in aesthetics. This was certainly not here when I came to the observatory in the 80s. This, by the way, is a cafe that you will arrive at after the Museum of Colors. And you can look out into the eastern side of Seoul. And if I'm not mistaken, that's the World Tower. That is the little island, Nodal Island, that I went to in my previous vlog. And one of these is Kwanak Mountain, one of the most scenic mountains I've climbed in all of Korea. But it's really fantastic looking at everything here. I mean, it's certainly better than flying a drone because you can really, really take your time, look at everything below you. And it just reminds you just how scenic and beautiful Seoul is. You guys know I've done videos about Bangkok and I really think Bangkok is a beautiful city, but if after seeing this video, you don't think Korea and Seoul is a beautiful city, I don't know what to say. Guys, I gotta say, Yuksan building, 6th Street building has definitely taken me by surprise. I mean, I'm like, how much of an interesting vlog can I make out of just one building? It does have nostalgic value to me, but, you know, how could it translate to my viewers? I'm really impressed just how much activities they jam-packed into this. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and this is another reason you should come to Korea, come to Seoul, enjoy everything it has to offer, and Yuksan building should definitely be one of the places you want to come to on top of your list. Anyways, if you like this video, subscribe, like, comment, do all those things that will help me grow my channel, not get burned out, and make more of these videos. But stay tuned, because the next video is going to be about the Cherry Blossom Festival in Yoido, which is one of the most famous events here in the Yongdimpo Yoido area. And I'm also going to get to meet some of my new global soulmate friends, and we'll have some interesting conversations. Flashback. I'm currently in Yeongdungpo district, which is one of the oldest districts here in Seoul. And I'm gonna check out some very iconic buildings around here. <laughs> but first, I'll be picking up the tickets from the Yeongdungpo tourist office here and checking out this other iconic building really fast Times Square. But to me, it's the architecture that's the most impressive here. Well, it's certainly as fancy as they come. I'm honestly not much for the expensive brands, but the outdoor cafes are something I could definitely do with. Not quite as iconic as the Yuksan building that we'll be heading over to, but Located super conveniently on line number one and it's also really close to the Mule Art District which I'll check out for a little bit as well. Now although it is a short walk, it's not really the most tourist looking area. But just trust Google Maps and keep walking. Alright, I think I'm at the heart of it all. <laughs> It took me a while to find this place because honestly it just looks like a steel working district but these little alleyways are hidden in between everywhere and it has a very 
I don't know, almost a Bangkok kind of feel. Very hipster. I'll be checking out some other areas through here. Wow. I'm really liking this. This is... Well, I feel like this is definitely the soul of Yongdeungpo here. Specialty restaurants and coffee roasters right alongside independent metalworking shops. I definitely think you should be coming here in the evening, but interesting in the daytime as well. You know, I could dedicate a whole vlog to this, but I gotta now head over to the Yuksan building, which is the main reason I came to Yongdeungpo. But next time you're driving by this unassuming street, be sure to stop by and check out the artsy alleys inside. The Mule area also seems like a very lovely area to be living in. 